All right, just want to do a real quick video here to show the truth about this whole thing. The Mormon Church here, you can see published on January 14th, 2019, so two days ago as, a record, as of the recording of this video, um, they brought this thing out, Rome, Italy Temple Begins Public Tours. Uh, the Mormon Church has built this extremely elaborate temple in Rome. Hmm. Um, I thought that the Antichrist religion was going to be all religions, you know, just kind of coming together under some new age thing. No, the, all the religions are going to go back to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. I'm not going to play the whole thing here. You can watch it. I'll put the links to it in the description box. But let's look at a little bit of this. Just outside of modern-day Rome, a new religious center has emerged near the village of La Cinquina Bufalotta. In homage to the cultured city for which it's named, the 40,000-square-foot Rome-Italy Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints takes design cues from ancient Rome. Enduring influences... Um, all church buildings take design cues from ancient Rome. Okay, <laughs> they all do. Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Mormon, whatever. That have impacted the world in architecture and art for 2,000 years. It is uh, beautiful. The craftsmanship is expert and perfect. This had to be one that when you walked onto this side, every person should feel like they were on an Italian site. They would recognize. <laughs> they all should feel like they're on an Italian site. Uh, that's because it is. It's in Rome, first of all, but secondly, uh, church buildings are Italian. They go back to the Catholic Church. You know, and it's so funny too because you know I have see Baptist. Oh, that's not true. It's ridiculous. Uh, they use Greco-Roman uh, architectural designs and details all through Baptist churches. The pillars out front, the you know the uh, Parthenon look and things to it. But let's just watch a little bit more here. I said because of the materials, because of the design, and because of the surrounding. In 1997, the church purchased an available 15-acre farm. When the church bought the land, uh, nobody, of course, knew exactly what was going to happen here. But members started calling this, this piece of property the, the future temple site. During the church's October General Conference in 2008, President Thomas S. Monson announced plans for a temple in Rome. Two years later, he broke ground on the project. It was a great day for me, for my family, and for all the saints in Italy. Now, Italian members celebrate another historic day, the completion of their much-anticipated temple. I have a strong feeling because of, finally we have a temple very close to us in, here in Italy. Now my children will have more opportunities to go to the temple than I had when I was younger. I'm from Sicily, so I could go to the temple just once a year. It's okay, now let's know what the guy says coming up here. Okay. Remember the Bible says in Acts chapter 7, and also in, uh, I think it's 17, I think, where it says about the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Listen to what he says. It's Come really a great opportunity and blessing for all the saints here in Italy to go back to our Heavenly Father house. The same <laughs> Heavenly Father house? Chapter and verse? Oh, oh, that's right. Maybe it's in the Book of Mormon. I don't know. Secret structures curved Bianco Sardo granite clad walls are inspired by the oval design from the Baroque era that incorporates an impressive array of stained glass windows inspired by the olive tree. The church of San Carlin in, in Quatrefontaine, I immediately thought could be inspiration for the temple. That started this very early concept of a curved temple both on the exterior as well as on the interior. The finest material. There's some uh, sexual symbology stuff going on there with the oval and whatever. We're not going to get into that. But uh, I'm just going to zip ahead here. Like I said, you can watch the whole thing. It's got this weird 
shandy there looks like an upside down Christmas tree. I thought that was kind of odd. But then you get into this thing here. Check this baptismal pool out. The baptistry's purpose is in keeping with the Savior's example to enter the waters of baptism and his commandment that all must be baptized. <laughs> all must be baptized. <laughs> no, that's not New Testament there. Sorry. But uh, anyhow, unless you're non-dispensational and, you know, whatever. But but uh, check out the, the way that the support structure of this baptismal pool. Here, temple patrons can act on behalf of those who did not have the chance to be baptized in this life. Inlaid stone wraps around an oval font, adorned with Roman-style acanthus leaves, held up by 12 oxen representing the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 oxen representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Then you go into these different other rooms, and here's this... Uh, I'll, I'll play a little bit here and I'll pause it. More superb. Okay. Notice the altar. You kneel there and you put your knees there and your shoulders or your uh, elbows there. Okay. Um, pretty much like the uh, entered apprentice does when they're being initiated into the Freemasonic Lodge. They kneel at the altar. And there's a Bible open before them and whatever else. See, Mormonism was created by Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith basically made Masonic rituals. He was a Freemason. He took Masonic rituals and made them his own religion. That's why they killed him, you know. Um, but weird. But the this other room coming up here, just zip forward to it. Um, watch this room come up. As enhance the Baroque era feel of the bridal room. And in the ceiling rooms, families are joined together. Looks like a coffin right there. With this kind of weird pad on top or whatever else, it, you know, I guess you could kneel there and all kneel around the coffin or something like this and pray over your dead loved one or something. I have no idea. Just weird, weird, bizarre stuff. And then they get into this here. Let me just zip forward to this. This other building on the compound, and they talk about the thing of these the twelve apostles here, and the Christos is in the center, Jesus Christ statue. They're Antichrist, in other words. But listen to what they say. Listen to where they got these this design of these statues from. Some statues in the Church of Our Lady in Denmark. The Lutheran Church granted special permission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to digitally scan the statues. Okay, a Lutheran Church gave them permission to digitally scan the, these statues and things. The Lutherans? Mm -hmm. They're all working together. Isn't that nice when daughters all work together under their mother? You know, Revelation 17, if you don't know what I'm talking about there. But it goes through there and, and whatever else just shows more of this hideous pagan temple, you know, that must have cost, Lord only knows how many millions upon millions of dollars they put into this satanic temple. And I'm sure the Antichrist is going to walk through that too, and everybody's going to be celebrating things and whatever else, you know. So. But uh, watch the whole video if you want to. But just another sign of what the Bible says. All roads lead to Rome. They're all going to come back. All the daughters are going to return back to Roman Catholicism. There is no New Age, New World Order. That is a lie. That's a stupid lie. It is a radical Roman Catholic dictatorship is what the coming Antichrist kingdom is. That's what it is. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.